my thesis potentially of, you know, a legitimate back test uh, could occur tomorrow. But again, like I said, we are prepared uh, for both sides of uh, the measure going into tomorrow. So again. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Monday edition. Hope everybody is doing well. So if you look at the scoreboard today, uh, nothing is going to kind of jump at you, right? And it's supposed to, right? When you look at the final numbers, NASDAQ down, what, 13, 14 points. Nothing's going to really stand out as one of those moments that you could turn around and say, well, let's take, let's maybe take a cautionary little step back. And I'll tell you what I mean. So pre-market today, we were sitting there, everything was all good. And then all of a sudden, uh, NVIDIA out of nowhere comes out and they guide lower. Now, why is that a big deal? Because, well, it's a big deal, right? So this obviously has a major, um, a major, major factor on a lot of the semiconductors. And it's all, it's also what it represents, right? They represent gaming, they represent Bitcoin, they represent chips, schmitz, dips, and everything else in between. And, you know, the NASDAQ started getting hit down a little bit uh, on the NVIDIA news. As you can imagine, a lot of the semiconductors went down with it. Now, the issue was with every single stock getting hit on weakness into a pre-announcement, again, we've kind of did a whole laundry list of this. You had Shopify, um, you had Shopify, you had uh, Meta, you had, uh, I mean, there's, there's so slew of them, Microsoft, this one, that one, all came out with either lowered uh, lowered guidance, missed the top and bottom, and what happened? They, they ran uh, AMD, they all ran up. And th today was the first time in the last two weeks that a major tech company went, actually went lower on earnings guidance, right? So that kind of turned around and you go, oh, okay, okay, it kind of makes sense, right? Bad news at the end of the day actually could be bad news. But the common denominator what we've been seeing now for the last several weeks is uh, the cues continue. No matter what happens with individual companies, they could be market leaders, they could be part of a major group, the market continues to go higher. And for the most part of the day, the cues are green, right? And, that's, and it was a kind of a very big deal. So it's like ho-hum, another company, uh, you know, another company, uh, lowered guidance, blah, 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 blah. Uh, everything is status quo, right? And the whole thing was, everything was. And we saw stocks like Tesla appear to come out of their channels, right? Barely come out of the channels. You had names like Google. But again, pretty decent moves at, at the open. And we'll get to individual pivots in a second. I apologize, I'm just a little tired. Um, and, you know, Google, right? You had Google come out of this whole range, okay? Uh, you had Google, uh, you had Microsoft, you had Amazon, all coming out of the ranges. And the one, the biggest one of all, were the QQQs that took out the previous three days, two days worth of selling, or at least two days worth of buying, and went higher. So this is the first time we saw, um, this is kind of where we segue into tomorrow's thinking. You know, this is the first day that we saw a major company guide lower and actually go lower. And this is the first time we saw in the past two weeks since we reclaimed uh, the 296.50 area, 296.75 area on the queues. This is the first time that we took out ranges, right? Multiple days of ranges in the same day, only to lose those ranges and close at the bottom range. And if you look at a lot of stocks, and again, I just gave examples today, Microsoft, uh, Google, Tesla, Amazon. You, you can, I'm sure if you go through the whole NASDAQ 100, uh, you'll get a, a a bigger view, but you know, but that's something we have to, you know, that's something we have to intake, right? That's something that going into tomorrow's session we have to keep in the back of our minds. And, and again, nobody's turning around and being like, "Well, that's it, that's the top inverted hammer." See you at the lows. No, nobody's saying that. The same way we we talked about on the weekend update is again, the market's up, Nasdaq's up two weeks in a row. So anytime you get weakness, like we saw a little bit of weakness on Friday, you know, it's healthy, right? It's healthy. It's organic. It's letting stocks uh, kind of rest a little bit. But this is the first time we saw this in the first last two weeks that stocks took out the previous day channel and they started coming in very aggressively. So, for example, uh, look at Microsoft, right? So there was a pivot on Microsoft. 
uh, off this 84 level. And granted, it was a nice trade. It was a little shaky, right? A little shaky at the open, but it ended up to be a nice trade. It ran up about two bucks or so. But when was the last time a stock comes out of a channel here, takes out one, two, three days, right? Three days worth of, of work, three days worth of data, comes back, puts in an inverted hammer, and puts in the lowest close in this whole formation. Again, that's a negative thing. That's not a positive thing. And, it, and, it's, and, we're, and again, I'm speaking from the point of, what happens the next day? Not what, where, where do I think Microsoft is gonna wind up three weeks from now or three months from now. We're basically talking about the next day. And this is where, again, we use technical analysis and price, right? Price data to kind of formulate our opinion for the next day. So for example, let's use the Qs, right? Let's use the Qs. So we talked about, we talked about over the weekend, there was an area of the Qs that I watched that if they started breaking down below those areas, I do think there's going to be a back test in the market. So far, uh, this 318 level, the 318.39 level on the Qs is a big deal. Granted, today we put in a higher low, you know, right? A higher low on the five day moving average, but we also put in an inverted hammer after losing a three day range, right? So you have to kind of weigh the pros and the cons. And every time you, you get any type of cons at the top of the range, you want to give gravity the benefit of the doubt. And so that's kind of where I'm preparing for tomorrow. So if the Qs start building below 318.39 tomorrow, then yeah, I do think we'll have a proper back test. Okay, again, nobody's saying we're going to the lows, but again, we have to prepare yourself. And, that, and it, whether you're a new trader, new trader, seasoned trader, whatever the case may be, you always have to be prepared for the other side of the equation. You always have to play devil's advocate so when the market opens up, you are prepared from both sides of the market. For example, I got some longs I like for tomorrow. I got some shorts I like for tomorrow. But I, I'm, I'm definitely gearing towards the stocks that, hell, you know, giving me data enough to, to say, hey, wait a minute, if they start losing the previous day's range, they could back test further. And that's kind of the whole point. So we're kind of getting prepared from both sides of the market. But I'm definitely, definitely watching this 318.39 level on the queues because if they start to confirm down uh, the 10 day moving average is going all the way down to this 314 level it doesn't sound like a big deal four dollars on the queues but again four dollars on the queues is still enough that if we could catch an individual underlying underlying equity for the move down it's gonna be a pretty healthy move considering there's a four dollar range to the next rise in support so we're kind of you know going day by day trade by trade and today was a perfect example like we kind of reiterate all the time in the webinar and on these updates as well again don't buy the stocks from the top right the stocks that already ran and that's why again and if they do run start taking profits on them right to always take on the way up always use break even on all runners let us stop you out break even okay if you if you get stopped out break even on the balance after you took money in your runner, you did your job, right? Because your runner is supposed to do two things, either stop you out break even or reach measure potential. And that's exactly what we talk about uh, every single day, putting yourself in a situation that you are in control of the market. The market's not in control of you. And this is why we say every single day, you don't need to trade every single day, but if you do get the premium hand and you are prepared for the next trading day, then it shouldn't be shocked when a stock that you're looking at plays out after technical confirmation. So going into tomorrow's session, again, we don't have to guess. We don't have to, we don't have to anticipate. We can't anticipate the queues breaking down from the 318 level. How can you possibly do that, right? That's, that's asinine, it's insane. It's, you're putting yourself in a situation that if they get close within a penny, you'll get squeezed back. So let the market, the market is going to back test tomorrow. Doesn't it have to take out the previous day's low, right? That's something we, we, we talk about in nausea. If a stock or an ETF or anything else wants to go lower, it needs to take out the previous day's low. If the stock ETF or any other asset class wants to go higher, it needs to take out the previous day's high. And again, here's where the eyebrows arise, right? are arisen, right? It did take out the previous day high. It did take out the previous range high. It went up and then it closed the lowest point in this range without taking out the previous day's low. So this is where my thesis potentially of, you know, a legitimate back test uh, could occur tomorrow. But again, like I said, we are prepared uh, for both sides of uh, the measure going into tomorrow's session. Again, the most important thing is just don't get anything surprised, right? You don't want to be like, I don't understand. How did Tesla go down $60 today? Where did it come from? Well, if you did your homework and you looked at the channels, you know exactly where the previous channel is. And if that channel gets taken down, there shouldn't be any surprise and you shouldn't be shocked uh, that you're upside down in your trade. Again, I'm just using Tesla as an example, but that could be applied to any single chart. So let's talk about today. 
So we talked about NET. This is you know, a nice clean move here. Uh, NET here, we talked about this on the video, came out with great earnings on Friday. It went sideways. If you guys just, all you have to do is go back to uh, the video, last night's video or whatever the video was. Uh, 74, 75, 75, 27, uh, 75 needs to build. So it took out 75, put in a high of 75, 27, retraced. And once it went through, it was a perfect second entry. And it did exactly uh, what we thought it was going to do. It traded right to uh, the 60 minute supply in the 76.60s. And it was you know, a really nice trade. And obviously, everything turned around and dumped. You know, nice, you know, nice trade. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Google was good. Uh, I traded into the 120s. Uh, again, we talked about Google and nausea. 118.80, 119 needs to build. Traded up to 120 and change and reversed. Uh, Microsoft, there was a pre market high at 85.20. There was actually a better entry. We'll talk about that in a second. And NVIDIA, before, before obviously it guided higher, uh, guided lower, I go, hey, 192.75 needs to build to the upside. Obviously, that was my next sentence. I have a hunch this won't confirm, right? Got it lower. Uh, and Tesla, I was watching to the downside, didn't confirm that level, but this 856 level will be kind of a big deal uh, going forward if there is a little bit of softness. So here is uh, Microsoft. This is kind of where we got lucky here a little bit. If it opens below 284, then use that as the pivot. It opened up below 284 and went from 284 to about 286 before everything reversed. Coin continues to be an absolute monster. Uh, 99 needs to build. Uh, here was Coinbase. I miss Coinbase. It was just way too fast, like literally way too fast for me. But it took out 99. It went to like 103 and a half. Just, just, just a beast. Just an absolute beast of a stock. Uh, RDFN. For all you guys who traded this one, great job, right? Great job here. Uh, it, what I try to do, I try to put one or two. Uh, smaller names, either in the webinar or in the t Twitter feed, just to, you know, to, to give somebody, give everybody something. Uh, RDFN 1087.11 needs to build. This this thing went nuts, right? This thing went absolutely nuts. Here's the RDFN, right? So it took out this uh, this whole area and traded all the way up to 1240. Just just psh, rock star move on RDFN. BYND. Talk about talk about it if you if you haven't figured out if this is a bull market yet. Uh, beyond, right? Another perfect example last week, guided lower, and the stock exploded. So here's, a, you know, here's the pivot, 39.66 needs to build. Look what Beyond did today, right? Look at Beyond, look at, look at the move here. It, went, it took out 39.66, went to almost 45, right? That's a bull market. That's where they're taking up everything. They don't care. They're literally uh, taking up everything uh, beyond. And I said 11.70 potential. This thing went to 12.50. Uh, we were watching shop. It didn't quite make it there to the 4260 level. Uh, Google went to 12015s. It said next stop 112 uh, 12260s. Didn't quite get uh, get there. Uh, and that is about it. So again, going into tomorrow, guys, just keep in mind. Just keep in mind this number here. Uh, this is all you need to do not to go long, right? So if you see the queues start building below 31830s, okay. I wouldn't go long. I mean, it just again, this is just my two cents, but I wouldn't go long. I mean, look at stocks that look heavy, right? Look at stocks like Amazon that are sitting there on the five day. If the five day confirms, it goes lower. Look at Tesla, right? Tesla had a big move up today, right? Got rejected. If Tesla loses this range, it's like $30, $35 worth of downside. Again, there's, there's, there's definitely value, okay? There's definitely value. Look on the upside, a name like Wayfair uh, looks pretty interesting. A name like Fold for all you guys who are trading these smaller names. Uh, looks pretty interesting. So I think there's something there for everybody, but I just wouldn't get too aggressive on the long side. If, if the channel start building and everything starts going, that's different. But if we run into a situation that the market's a stalemate and we're just not going higher, it'll probably be a situation that if we are prepared, which we are for tomorrow, that if they start taking down the bottom channels, we'll be ready for that as well. Guys, have a great night. God bless. I wish you all the best. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.